Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Thank you all for joining us for another episode of Station Cribs. We are in Upper Co, Maryland, which is in Baltimore County, and we're going to be doing the Upper Co Volunteer Fire Station. This one's brand new, so let's go see what they have. So today we're going to be meeting up with their PIO, Scott, and one of the architects that designed this building, Rob. So let's go talk to him. Welcome. Hello. Hi. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hey, hey, Rob. Good to How see you again. Good to see you too. Um, first of all, I want to say what a fantastic view it was coming down here. You know, I was looking on the map, seeing what's around you, and this is a pretty large area that's both rural and suburban. Yes. Yes. So, uh, first of all, before we get started, let's talk to our, our viewers a little bit. Tell me who you are. My name is Scott Warner. I've been in the fire service for 46 years. Um, currently PIO officer of, of Upper Cove in charge of the new building also. Okay. And Rob? Rob Vans, uh, principal architect with Mans River Studios, one of the lead architects for this project. Awesome. Awesome. And how old is this building? Uh, we officially moved in in February this year. Okay, yeah. so brand new. Yes, brand new. All right. Was this a collaboration between other companies? Is yes. This we, um, Boring, and Arc Boring and Arcadia were two separate volunteer companies. One to the left of us, one to the right of us. Uh, very rural companies. Uh, several years ago, matter of fact, back in 2016, actually 2015, the county did a study and realized that the volunteers should, should try to do a merge. So Boring and Arcadia got together back in 2015, uh, talked about it, decided let's go with it. 2016 did a vote and then hit the ground running. Uh, got you know, got with the county, the county says there's no way you're going to be able to do this merge in a year. We did all the paperwork, everything else had to be done within a year. The paperwork was signed and we were moving forward with MANS. Wow, yeah. And this was not a firehouse before. This, this is was, a complete this, new location. This right? was a cornfield. <laughs> <laughs> this was a cornfield and so, a soybean field. This goes to you, Rob. There was a significant amount of work that had to go into this. Can you tell us about what the beginnings were all? So, um, you know, like with any volunteer fire company, there comes, you know, especially with such rich tradition coming from the two coming together, it really became about consensus building. Um, you know, you had some, some people that had been involved with each company for the better part of their lives and were, of course, apprehensive about, you know, the challenge of what happens when you take two and become one. Basically, it's a marriage, right? And so getting everybody on the same page, finding a site that not only fit better response time profiles, but would also serve as kind of like a gem or a, a beacon to the community. And so working together, this isn't our design, this is our design, if you will. Uh, working together to try to find a solution that fit the needs of both companies and the traditions that they have, you know, which you can kind of see through some of the memorabilia that they exhibit here in the lobby, and then looking down towards the future as we come down the hallway. So, you know, the, there's a rich history here. It dates back over 100 years, and hopefully this, for at least us, we hope this will be a facility that will serve them for 100 more. Yeah, yeah, it's actually very beautiful. I like the blue color that you had. I noticed that you have blue ambulances and fire trucks and stuff like that. I come from a blue uh, fire station. No, too, no. So. You're at home then. <laughs> <laughs> so we walk right in from the, the main parking lot, which is where any public would come. That's the, yes, the, as you pull up to the building, to the right side of the building, is for public access obviously you come in through the double doors come into our little museum into the training room and everything else members go to the left side of the building and then big parking lot around back also. okay can you talk me through what you have here in the museum well, what we've done here is in, like you said like rob said we came in we took two companies that have both been in existence for over 100 years each and put them together and it's like well you just can't take all that history and get rid of it we don't have a building big enough to put all the history in so we said okay these are the pieces that we want to show the most so we designed, Rob's team came up with this you know, design here. That's the first chemical wagon that Boring had. It was a horse drawn and actually at the 100th anniversary for Boring, that went to Ocean City as, as a merge with us and went through the parade. Wow. We had horses pointed, so we had every That's piece. Awesome. So we had every piece that Boring and Arcadia had in Ocean City. And for the Fireman's Convention, it's the first time the trophy for the Maryland State Fireman's ever came across the bridge. We took it nice. the year of our merge. So it's something we're really proud of. But we took that. The history from Arcadia here, and this is just like a little minute piece of it. And the history for Boring on the other side, and said, okay, you come in, 
it's two separate entities here, and as you walk down the hallway, it becomes the one. That's a pretty good way so to do that. And that was all Rob's, you know, his brainchild coming up with how to do and this. And Lindsay too, yes. lurking in the background. Right. So. <laughs> All right, how about we walk through the station? Let's start with maybe the training room you yeah, said. Yeah, we'll, we'll go down to the training room. I say if the public comes in, public has access to come in here. We come on down, you know, just a little bit of things on the walls here and there. But this is a training room to seat, seat 75 people. When we do classes, you know, bring the community in. This is a large training room. So yes. do you, how many volunteers do you have? Active on the books, probably 75. Okay. Yeah. So you needed a pretty large yes, training room yes. to do that. I mean, I say any given time, I say, but we do a lot of MIFRI classes. Okay. Training up here. Just a matter of fact, I just got done a, doing a fire officer two class through MIFRI um, that was taught up here. So it's like I say, we use this as our showpiece. Like, okay, you know, look, we got state of the art. Let's go with it. Okay. And for everybody's knowledge, that's uh, Maryland Fire Rescue Institute, okay. which is part of the University of Maryland system, correct? Right. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Right. So. Um, so do you also rent this out for no, anybody? No. Okay. The, the, whole, the whole premise of this is, this is the firehouse. When Arcadia was up there, Arcadia had the firehouse on one side of the street, we owned 73 acres on the other side of the street where our activities building is, the steam show, the music fest, the, the uh, festival of lights. Boring had you know, a bunch of acres down there, so they, we sold the firehouse piece of Arcadia, so whatever think of Boring's, put the firehouse here, and all the activities, any rentals, are up at the hall. That way, this is strictly for firefighters. Okay. You know. Probably one of the more unique events that you guys have is demolition derby. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have we had two or three demolition derbies a year up, okay. at, up at the grounds. Um, starting in October, we'll do a, it's called the Yuletide Festival. It's actually a little over a mile of outdoor lights, and then you come back into a great big train garden that we build inside the building, a Christmas train garden. Okay. So that's one of the you know that's one of the fundraisers. Do you use those things to help fundraise? Yes. That's that's the, the, the demo derbies, the steam the steam show, the music fest, the the Yuletide lights is it's all fundraisers to, to keep active going here. Dude, that's awesome. I'm definitely going to have to come down and watch some of those derbies. They, they're, they're fun. <laughs> they're definitely fun. So, All right. So now from here, where do you go? Where, well, how does it work? We got Coming out of the training room, We get, the first right takes us right into the kitchen, or you go back out the main hallway, it takes you down the main hallway, going down through the, the like the administrative side and the, the offices. Okay. But we cut in and go, we'll go through the kitchen. Okay. So. I like that you have the refreshments here too. I'll say so, that's so if we're having training class or whatever, you come out and get refreshments here and, and you know. Right, you don't so, have to necessarily go into the kitchen right. if someone's on crew. Now this is the kitchen area. You know, we joke about it. Wow. Okay. One, of the, one of the nice features that we've done in here, we've done a day room, which I'll show you. Nobody uses it. No, they all sit at everybody, the kitchen table. Everybody well, sits at the kitchen table. Of the, the problems of life get solved, solved at the right kitchen at the table. Kitchen table. Right. So, so, this yeah. is a huge kitchen. It's yes. very well lit. It's yes. very bright. I like the fact that you got big windows off to the side with a patio. We, one of the things that we are just talking about is that 80% of the, the, built, the rooms in here get natural light somehow or another. Right. So. And, and we were going about designing this, you know, he pointed out that 80% of the spaces have natural daylight. Like, our big focus through my entire career has been fire rescue and making sure that, you know, natural daylight, fortunately, is becoming more of a conversation in mental health and wellness and first response community. We know that it plays a huge role in mental health and wellness, balancing better sleep conditions, cardiac health, so on and so forth. So, uh, this is one of the first fire stations that we did that we really strove to make sure that every occupied space receives natural daylight. Now your storage closets and your bathrooms, not so important, right. but you know, if we, if we share floor plan with you, you'll see that the building's kind of split open here. And the reason for that, even though it's not the most efficient footprint, is we're able to really get a ton of natural light into the kitchen. And as you guys walk into the main corridor, we're flooding a lot of the interior spaces with some of that clerestory lighting as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even though the light's coming from out this the way, you have glass on the other side of the kitchen yes. to keep yes. that light going through. Yes. It gives you that open concept feel. It gives you that brightness that, you, you, that you're really looking for. Well, as you go down the main corridor, there's clear stores on both sides. So which you're getting natural light down through the main corridor also. It's like everywhere you go, there's natural light coming through this. Okay. So. Now, a question for me is, do you have paid staff here? Do you have we volunteers? Have, or how we are 100% volunteer with the exception of we have paid medic crews every now and then. Okay. But the firefighting side is 100% volunteer. Nice. Okay. So. Uh, so we can go back down through the back side or the main cart or whatever. Let's do the main corridor so, and we're going to save the engine bay or the apparatus bay for last. Yes, okay. So coming back through the kitchen is, you know, we, we did the like the coffee bar type style thing. Yeah. You know, come on in here. Love the you know, countertop. It's, you know, today is everybody's got to have a laptop. So when we designed it, we had a ports all across. Everybody can sit down and plug their laptops in. You know, yep. you, you can't survive if you're not on your phone or your laptop. <laughs> exactly. So, 
especially yeah. that younger generation. Yes. I'm still struggling yeah. okay. with it. But. One of the, one of our key features was this was talked about with the re, reclaimed barnwood. Okay. So we, we came up with a style of what we're going to do. Took our that's the patch of the two companies. Boring used to be 42. Arcade was 43. Okay. Hence to put them together, it's 85. That's yeah. it. So that's where we got you know the number 85. Did that and put it together. That's a good way to do that. So you know, you know. and everybody you know consolidated in 2017. Right. What did happen? And right. when you go to the outside, one of the key things. I mean, you, you, we identified that this used to be a cornfield, right? So yeah. this whole surrounding community is largely agricultural in nature, with a little bit of suburbia kind of sprinkled through in. And so um, from a design perspective, we knew we needed to you know especially in a volunteer firehouse where you're trying to attract and recruit and retain people to create a facility that's memorable right. and people kind of recognize. And so from the outside, we tried to pay kind of homage to the surrounding agricultural community. So a lot of the materials that you see, like the reclaimed barn wood, some of the concrete floors, you know, blending, using some traditional materials, but yet in like a kind of a modern way and a modern form. So right. you know, at, at night, when you're coming up the hill on this thing, it just kind of glows. And, you know, in a way, it communicates to the community like, hey, we're here. We're here to help. Right, right. Now, I noticed a trend of a couple different firehouses. We did a firehouse back in uh, Phoenixville, Pennsylvania, that has the concrete floors. Explain to us why that's a good idea to start doing these floors. So, you know, one of the, it, there's, there's a lot of benefits to it. It's, you know, a pretty easy surface to keep clean. Um, it's relatively inexpensive compared to some other resilient flooring systems. And the install is pretty easy for the contractor to manage. Now, one of the challenges is they need to protect it during construction. If you can imagine, there were some forklifts and lifts and whatnot moving through here. Uh, you know, you want to be real careful. You don't like spring a hydraulic leak that stains the concrete. Right. So you get the, the contractors needs to protect this during that process. Okay. But it's, you know, you can see it's not that slick if you put the right additives in it. Um, and that's really important, especially for safety as we get into the bays. Um, but, you know, we've done, I don't know, probably 30, 40 stations. And we've tried pretty much everything along the lines from, you know, uh, I remember back when we had carpeting. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> and there's certain areas where that's okay. You want it to be antimicrobial, but your heavy traffic areas, you know, yeah. where you're, you know, coffees and yeah, we're constantly know, replacing well, tiles, constantly yeah. replacing carpeting, yeah. and that so, kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, there's areas, and you can see it's a little echoing here, but this isn't a, a space of concentration. Right. right? So you see when we get into so some of the offices and coming stuff. Coming down here is your administrative. Yeah, office. we have the treasurers, then the we got the treasurer office. The administrative office, the suppression office, and then our watch room. Okay. And that, and that corridor, as I point out, kind of leads you. You know, we'll we'll get right. to the bays eventually from tradition to the to future. Modern. Okay. So a little bit of yeah, so you know design and. And I'll say going through here, it's, you know, I think one of the selling points for us is you know being in a rural area, it's sort of like an old carriage house. You, you look at looking out front, looking at the clear story with all the lights, and but you know, right. Our board of directors' room is you know it's nicknamed fishbowl. <laughs> I can tell. It's yeah. the fishbowl. Yeah. But it, I mean, it's it. Everybody walks in and goes, wow. I like that concept because you are engaging your own members. You know, a lot of times when you get into a, a narrow um, board meeting or something like that, you close yourself off and people are like, what's going on, what's going on? You are saying, hey, we're an open book. We're well, transparent. We're here for you. We're here I'm, for I'm old school and yeah. I went, I, I was against this for the fact of it is me being an ex-chief of 14 years is when I put some money in a room to discipline, it's me and them. I don't need the world seeing it, sure. but that's not today's society. And it's like to them, so, and I, what you're saying is correct. You know, we are transparent. You know, we're bringing you in here, hey, you did a great job, or hey, you messed up, let's do it better the next time. But hey, we're, this is how it goes. Right. And it's, it's nice, but I mean, it, but it's nicknamed the fishbowl. Yeah, right. So when we joked about it, though, we came up with you know, another room, and you know, we were sitting there the one night, and Ashley, who's the president at the time, was turning around. And, it's like, what are we going to call this? She goes, what are we going to go in there and do? It's like, well, people want to go in there and like study, close the door, whatever. She goes, okay, it's the think tank. Perfect. And it's fourth, the think Love tank. Love the name of it, yeah. And so that's, that's Ashley's pride to it is the think tank. <laughs> and so. if you do need to have those mentorship moments or those private right. conversations, you know, there's right. all, all the offices right. are sized for that as well. And there's some, you know, little alcoves and but, right. you know, places we, you like could this. Do it. You don't have to put it on full right. display. Right. Right. You don't have to be so. a full display all the right. time. Yeah, and so. a lot of the volunteers are coming and maybe they're working from home nowadays, yes. you know, especially since COVID, a lot of people have transitioned to that. They can come to the firehouse, go to the think tank, do their work, work and still and take it, a call. Correct, correct. You know, so or even some of the younger people that we're trying to get. So if you're out there and you want to join, you can come here and you can do your studies here. It, it was amazing. And so, so we said it at the, the ribbon cutting ceremony is we turn back around and once this hit, you know, the media, what it was, Literally, it shut the website down for so many people downloading applications. Wow. It was that many people were you know, trying to join. It literally shut the website down for a it's while. It's amazing how much a building uh, and a location and going even through Emerge can draw in new members. Right. Well, it's a place people want to be. Right. right. And that, that makes a big difference. Right. Uh -huh. 
Yeah. Uh, up here you have an EMS lounge. Yes, this is for the for the paid medics or if anybody's riding a medic unit. It's go in there and then in the EMS room that's behind it is also a locked area just for the EMS crew so they have their own little facility. Okay, so, so. is there bunks in there for them to stay overnight? Are they 24 seven? Yes, no, they, they can be, but a lot of times they'll actually sleep in the regular bunk rooms and okay. we'll get to the, where the bunk rooms are. Okay, So yes. and behind me is a nice yes. watch room, right? Yes, the watch room is, as I say, it's, it, for the years it was the heart of the firehouse. That's, you know, the watch room was, somebody stayed up all night, manned radios and everything else. It's not that way anymore, but we, you know, we have both TVs. We've got cameras on all the, you know, all corners of the building. You see who's coming in, going out. It tells you the weather, tells you where the calls are. Um, you know, you could control all the doors. And once we got in the engine bay, you'll see how my pride enjoys the doors. <laughs> right. So, but I mean, you sit out there and it's like I say, it's just, I was telling Rob and Tim earlier, you know, sitting here in the morning, cause I'd come up at 5.30 in the morning when they get started and I'd go to my job and come back is watching the sun come up over this hill in the morning is absolutely gorgeous. It's right, like, right. wow, I mean, this is, it's, it's what a picture it is. The, well, the one thing that I'm getting is, you know, Rob, you as the designer said, hey, this was tradition. This is where they were spent. We can't get rid of that and we want to incorporate that in. And it looks like it from even the outside of the building, it's a little different. Yeah, it pops out off the facade as, you know, if we were to go in, you can kind of see that, you know, this individual here has a pretty commanding view of the road coming in. They've got visibility on the apron. They've got visibility down the bay line. But, you know, in today's era of technology, the watch office isn't what it used to be, right? So really, while it, it serves those functions, it also doubles in technology. This is kind of the central brain of the entire station. As you know, Scott pointed out, you can see that all the door controllers are right there. You know, they can control, they can monitor and control the HVAC systems. They're communicating with the county dispatch on all of this stuff. So everything kind of comes into here and then emanates throughout. You can hear the, the alerting system going off in the background a moment ago. So it really all starts here and then propagates throughout the rest of the building. That's cool. That's cool to see. Now you said you have bunks on another side. Oh yeah, we, we're, you're on the front side. You haven't got to the back side yet. <laughs> all right. So yeah, as we go down and say, and the way it's designed is coming from, you have, we have two carters coming out that go into the engine bays. So it's made for quick, you know, to get into the engine bay quick. As you go down the back corridor, we're getting ready to see you go right into the gear room. Okay. So when you come out of the gear room, you're so, going. So from you know the two corridors, you know this main corridor. This is more public interaction or semi-public interaction, right? We're inviting guests. We might interact with the suppression office, with the president, with the treasurer. Um, you know, we get a little glimpse of what's going on in the kitchen, but you'll notice we don't see the day room. Yeah. Right. And part of that is by design, and you don't see the fitness area. You know. You don't want the perception of maybe, or maybe they didn't want the perception of the public. Well, all these guys do is sit around all day, or they get paid, even though they're volunteers, to just work out. Right. So there's some private side. If you have a house party, the last thing you do is invite your guests and say, you know, here's my master bedroom. Right. So organizing the station in a way that, you know, had a good public presence was, yeah. was key to this. And designing a building that is actually kind of separated versus up top bottom couldn't be a challenge, you know, having this on one side and that on the yeah. other. And that's part of you know the two main arteries that allow you to flow into the apparatus bay. You know none of this. You know while we talk about daylighting and all these other things, the you know first and foremost, form's got to follow function. It's got to function as a fire station. We got to make sure we're optimizing response times, that the travel distances aren't egregious, um, and that we can get these guys and girls to where they need to be as quickly as possible. Right now, the new NFPA standards you know have hot, warm, and cold zones, yep. and. Uh, basically times on when you can get from your room to the apparatus. Yes. You incorporate all that into this building. Everything was done here from the furthest point of travel uh, is about 40 seconds max. Okay. And that would be from the training room, your bunk rooms, uh, if you're calculating for some, you know, wake up time, get yep. your shoes on type thing, yep. you know, about 25 seconds. Okay. So, you know, that, that includes the turnout to your process. So while it's a volunteer station and falls under the 1720 standards, these guys could easily meet the 1710 career standard times. Nice. Right. Very good. good. Day okay. room. All right, so here's the day room. Oh, beautiful. Plenty of recliners for yes. everybody. That's a so with a you know crew of 75, you could have a pretty good night here. And, yes, you know, staff say, this up. We actually, the, the, the common bunk room has eight bunks capable of putting up to 16 bunks. And then we have four or five actually live in bunk rooms that are we have. Okay. So, All right. Yeah. Show me the rest of the house. This yeah. is awesome. As we're walking, I want to ask you a couple questions about come some stats. Like, how big is your territory? Total square footage. I'm going to play ignorant to that. I, I can't even tell you how big it is. Okay. Because we took the two and merged the one. So, I mean, we we, we it's a total. Of, we could break them down to box areas. But it's probably 25 box the different box sizes we have. Okay. There. But it goes all the way from from the Carroll County line. Okay. And we run in Carroll County, we're second doing the Carroll County, all the way up to the other side of Falls Road, all the way to the Carroll County line this way. 
and down into Mercerstown. Awesome. So it's, we got to, anyway, some of our first do, running light, running hot, is a good 14 minute run okay. to get to where we got to go. Okay. And it's all rural roads. About how many calls do you get? And are they more mainly EMS? Are they fire? Or? Yes. The, <laughs> the fire service is not a fire service. The fire service is an EMS service. Now. Okay. So it, it, anywhere, in any jurisdiction, anywhere in the country is. It used to be when you dialed 911, it was an emergency. Now, and now it's because of all the EMS calls, it's, we're probably, it used to be 80% fire, 20% EMS. It's probably the point of 75 EMS to 25% fire. Okay. I mean, it also so, has something to do with the building codes at large, right? Like sure. a lot of the surrounding structures now have fire suppression, right. fire alarms. It's, you know, the, the frequency of the, you know, five alarmers are just right. intrinsically right. going yeah. down, although there's still a risk, right. you know. Well, and that's a testament to us growing up in right. this. We've been pushing fire suppression and making sure you got your smoke alarms right. and all that kind of stuff. We pretty much worked ourselves off a job. <laughs> That's correct. That's correct. It doesn't hurt my feelings. Which is good. It doesn't yeah. hurt my feelings at all. That's right. That's right. I'd rather be safe than sorry. You know? well, but it's one of them. That's the days. But you know, your so, other job is fire suppression in itself. So. I'm 24 seven fire. So, right. so once you get back in here, this becomes the bunk place. Okay. So obviously, I noticed that it's locked then. Too. Yes. So general public cannot get back to where the living quarters are. That's okay. just you know, it's one of these today's societies. Like, nope, this is members only. That's. And if you notice, we got cam surveillance cameras all through the building. Okay. That's just today's society. Yeah. Sadly. It keeps it safe and you, you make sure that, you know, if something happens, you can figure right. out where it is. Or if it's a, an accusation that didn't happen, you can right. protect yourself just as well. Exactly. All right. Go ahead. Uh, all right. So as you come down the general bunk room, this is the, this is the common bunk room. Okay. So. Turn on the lights a little bit here. I think I'm there they are. Yeah, and the thought process, you'll see the more in private individual dorms. You know, from a, we started talking budget and how to control costs and what was appropriate. And the analogy that we use is, you know, don't design your church for Easter Sunday. Right. And so we have, you know, storms that'll come in. Actually, what, we had we're snowmageddon, gonna have... we got slammed by two uh, blizzards. I know you guys experienced yeah. that up north. Yeah. And, you know, during events like that, or we had a real big windstorm coming the other day, week, yeah. you might staff up once or twice, maybe three times a year, but to take these eight sleeping positions, or really we have four here and then two more on the other side, okay. these eight sleeping positions and spread them out into eight individual dorm rooms is pretty much balloons the square footage. So right, the idea right. here is that you have your regulars that are here all the time in the individual rooms, okay. and then the people that float in and out on demand as need be. And these can also be racked, which really, as yeah, Scott so pointed out, we yeah. can we can go to 16 if need so be. We, we can okay. double stack them and actually put 16 if right. we ever got and to. And you build high enough ceilings. Right. High enough right. ceilings. You know, you know, all the lockers in here to hold the 16, you know, the 16. Right. Yep. And you can get assigned a locker. You come yes. in and say, okay, this is going to be yeah. my yes. locker and put your well, locker. I'll say, you see, you got, everybody's yeah. got names on them. Yeah, yeah. You know, they all came in and claimed them. It's like. You know, that's what, that's and some sport. people still prefer that camaraderie of you know sharing a common box. So it gives them the flexibility sure. to do that as well. Right. A lot of thought process. In, when All right. Goes. We'll head back out in the hallway here. So these. Okay. Right. So at night, all this overhead lighting is off. Right. And these are on, so it affords you the opportunity to kind of navigate to the restrooms come back and forth, Okay. and then these are the individual sleeping quarters. Now, do you usually give these to assigned people that may be spending the night here on a regular basis, or yes. are they for the medics? Or? It's actually, we're, we're starting a live-in program. Okay. And we got a couple colleges close to us, and nice. it's one of these things is, it's whoever wants to live here, but it's one of them, you know, you're going to school, I can't volunteer anymore, but I run this ride to fire engine. Hey, we got a deal for you. So, you know, come on out, we'll give you your own bunk room, be able to live in here and give us so many hours a week. Yeah, so yeah. I got a lot right. of companies near me in Chester County are going back to that. I know when I started, you know, years and years ago, there were quite quite a bit of live-ins, so. uh, but then they went away. Oh, this right. is really nice. Yes. Um, and as the live-ins are coming back in in vogue, um, you're seeing it become more and more popular with the college crowd. Right. I say so. the, the one company south of us, they turned around and did it down in Arbutus because they're right beside UMBC. And I was talking to the chief, it's like, how do you how do you guys do it? And he went, easy, we went over to college. And you walk around and go, oh, that guy's a firefighter. Hey, you wanna, wanna ride a fire engine? Man, I really miss it. Come come talk to us. Right. And it, I mean, they're stamped almost all the time. Yeah. It's yeah. like, man, that's the way it goes. So and now- for a college student, if you really think about it, you're giving up uh, room, room. All right. You don't have to pay for that. You're not getting that. Right. You get all the electricity and all the, really, those yeah. other things, you are getting supplied and you get yeah. And they, they get the benefit of some of the other benefits too. You know, there's certain county benefits that are offered to volunteers. Right. Okay. So it's really a win, 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 win situation right. for everybody because, you know, from a taxpayer's perspective, and you're talking about a volunteer system, 
You know, this particular county did a study that you know the staff today at Career Engine Company would be north of a million dollars per year. And right. I'm sorry, seven hundred, let's say, thousand dollars per year. Well, if you got volunteers to do that for you, that's a huge incentive. Yeah. Right. And you know, if you give them a place to be that they want to be, you're more likely to have that staffing. So it's really right. kind of understanding right. Right. that relationship. And I like that you know they just fly their own cab, you know, right. dressers, right. Yes. and you got things underneath. So I say this one, you know, we've guess. only been in since February, so we're still working on getting everything set up for the the limits to come in. Sure. So, but it's, you know. Yeah, some of the features, you know, the, the lighting is against the wall, not direct down light, so we're washing the wall. Yep. Um, they've got the volume selector switch for the alerting system. They can set themselves to fire or EMS. Okay. Individual climate control. And then, as we pointed out, every place has natural daylight, even the bunks, but we know that, you know, firefighters are peculiar creatures. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they're double layered. There's a blackout shade that sits back behind that. They okay. can completely eliminate the light. They can diffuse the light with these light diffusing shades. So it gives them, you know, full control of their environment. Right, right. So if you guys are out there and you're in this community and you're thinking about volunteering, and you're like, ah, how do I do this? Or I want to save some money on some rent? Come to the firehouse. They'll set you up. We'll take care of you. <laughs> so I so say we have, we actually have five live-in. You know, okay, rooms. five live-in. Right. And then we have three showers for the live-ins or for any of them which, you know, I joke about it, is nicer than my house, you know. Yeah, it's a spa. It's yeah. like, <laughs> like, 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 call what it is, it's yeah. a spa. Yeah, very so, nice. Yeah. We set that up and it's one of these, you know, if we're gonna do it, let's do it right. Right. So um, The only small detail that I just noticed is the drain in front of the shower. Yes. A lot of the public buildings have to have that handicap accessibility, even though there's not really handicaps right. there, I've had a fire station that built the shower, forgot about that, and they put a ledge there, and then it just kind of backs up and it creates a pool. Yes. You guys thought of that right from well, the beginning. Well, this isn't, this isn't, you know, this <laughs> is more of a learning radio. process, right? So, yeah, you have to have that accessibility, and that can be up to a half inch threshold, and that's fine, but we've learned that, you know, you're taking a shower, water spraying everywhere, it's dripping under the curtain, it's going out onto the floor, and we're like, wait a minute, we just need to take a minute and rethink this accessibility issue, and we realize, well, now most of the water, if you put the drain in the middle, most of the water is still going off to the side. Let's just capture it where it's going and that linear trench drain right by the threshold is done. You know, this isn't the first time we've done this in a station. Has been probably the most successful approach to that. It also makes it much easier for these guys to clean. Right. It's a much larger target for the mop yep. to get it to where it yeah. needs to go. And, and for a guy that spends 24 yeah. hours in a firehouse on a regular basis, I'm doing that all the time and yep. I'm constantly squeezing in down yeah, my Yeah, kind of getting, yep. getting through it all and, and getting done quick. And right. you know, there's, there's things as you go through that, the little details like, you know, do we want floor mounted toilets or wall mounted toilets? Right. You know, that's something that you often don't think about, but getting a mop underneath a yeah. wall mounted toilet is a heck of a lot easier than yeah. you know cleaning the grout and the sealant around the floor yep. mounted toilet. Right. So. Well, a lot of thought went into it. I was going to say, Mans did a, a, a great job of designing what we got here. I was say, but it was a group effort of we want this, we want that, you need this, you need that. So, okay. But say we got the five bunk rooms, then we got a utility room down the end, washer and dryer. Okay. Do, so they can do the laundry here. Yep. So. And that's separate of all of the decontamination transition right. zone. That is. That washer, that laundry room is intended strictly for linens and clothes and, okay. yeah. you know, de de decontaminated yeah, the, the decons on the other side on to the engine bay side. Right, right. Yeah. I like the detail that you actually put individual locks on each of the yes. bunks too. So when you we do get the land bands, you they, can change it. We can change easy. it to their code and they're, they're the only ones that have it. Right, right. So that, that's one of the things we looked at. Okay. So. Now, I'm here. I'm sleeping. I, the call comes out. How do I make my way? So when you come on out around the corner, that's what Rob was saying about the response times. You come back up, come down the hallway. And little details like the door swinging in the direction of response. Yeah, okay. Makes it nice and easy. Come out and you make a hard right. Okay. And you're into the gear room that ah, fast. Nice. And this is that NFP regulations of having that separate cold, hot, hot. and warm yep. zone. Yep. Actually, and this cold, is, cold, we consider hot. this warm because this should be clean gear at this yes. point. Right. Yes. Right. So this is. You know, we've got positive airflow coming from the living side to make sure that this air doesn't end up migrating its way back in, even though this, basically we're looking at dirtiest, a little dirtier, yep. cleanest. And yeah. we want to try to make sure that all the air is moving towards the dirtiest space as opposed to the, the reverse, uh, you know, the direction. Yeah, right, right. And so when we look at this area, you know, from a design standpoint, you know, we're all bigger guys, you know, <laughs> we want room to get our gear right. on. So you and I back and back and let back Scott right. get, right. get right. behind us. Yeah, yeah. Right. Now, you mentioned earlier when we were walking around, you also have a weight room. Is that on yep. the clean side or? Above us. There's an upstairs. Okay. Above I'll, us. I'll keep going then. So, so it's on the mezzanine. Right. It's on the mezzanine. Right. So also 
decon room. Yep. Right there. But then after you come through there, then you come in as, as goofy as it is. It's just a another another like washer and dryer for the clothes that you had on, not not the your gear. But right. So like the truck towels and you yes. know, wiping off your gear. Yep. That kind Do of that stuff. here. Right here. And then you got another bathroom. Then okay. Go so it's there. a it's a retransition zone. So you know we've come back the different kind of calls. MVC. We're directing traffic. We're you know not really getting ourselves contaminated with anything. We might just come back, hang our gear, just come through, wash our hands, so on and so forth. Right. Well, you know, we go to a structure fire from, it was built in the 60s and 70s, and you know, presumably these guys are coming back potentially with things like asbestos mm -hmm. on their turnout gear. So this becomes a little bit more of a serious decontamination effort. They're taking their bunker gear off, they're using the decon room. Now they're coming in and they're declothing in their entirety. Right. And they're leveraging some lockers that are in there. They're getting the shower within the hour concept, yep. get completely decontaminated, and then, as you can see, we transition back into the green zone, into the living environment. Right, so, so there's two doors in. Yes, yeah. yep. so we don't even have out. to go back and touch the dirty handle of the turnout gear. It's right. just, you know, we're working our way through, and at that point, we're back in you know, our PT gear. Yeah. We can go do what we need to do to continue to, you know, shower. And if I recall, the shower is thermostatically controlled so it doesn't get too hot. Okay. Right. And the, rea the, the rationale behind that is we want to keep those pores closed till yeah. we get everything off. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So it's kind of a miserable experience, but a necessary <laughs> but one. But it's, it's a good thing. So I, the fact that you guys incorporated all these things into a volunteer station is just amazing. A lot of times these things get overlooked. They're more, oh, that's a career station. You don't have to worry about career. Volunteers are just going to go home. You guys are saying, no, no, we're going to treat this as is for the protection and health and safety of our volunteers. Well, for me as a designer, my best friend growing up, his father was a career firefighter for the city of Baltimore and he ended up getting uh, cancer of the larynx and testicular cancer. And so, you know, that was way before this was even sure. a topic of conversation. So, you know, my philosophy towards having conversations with clients is cancer doesn't care whether you're a career volunteer. Why are, you know, we've learned all these lessons. Why are we not applying this forward? Yeah. And, you know, if you're really trying to future proof, Nobody knows what the next 20, 30, 50 years is going to look like. Right. Who's to say or the that next this, pandemic right. comes around? Who's, who's exactly to right. say? Yeah. I mean, we've, you know, public safety at large is constantly this game of reaction. Well, where we can be proactive, we should be. Yeah, agreed 100. Okay, yeah. so then we get back out here. So once we're coming out of the gear room, right, we go right into the apparatus bay, and we have two exits to get to the apparatus bay. Okay. Actually, coming if you're, oh, three. yeah, yeah, like three days going out. You know, if you're coming in from the parking lot. The member parking comes right to here, comes right into the, okay. so as you're re responding from home or coming into a call, you come right into the gear room and then right back out again. Right, and try to get my bearings a little bit. The front of the building's up here. That's correct. So they'll come up the main pathway, they'll come around the, the back of the back building, of the park building. their car yeah. so it's nice and secure, right. come in the back door, yes. get their gear and get on the truck. Yes. Yeah. You have a mezzanine, right? Yes, we have mezzanine above this. All right. Two. Two we got, mezzanines. We, yes, we actually got two mezzanines on each side. All right. So, you know, EMS crews, you're coming out. And the natural flow is you're flowing in from behind the apparatus right. yeah. as opposed to in front of it, front safer of it. From, from an operational standpoint. So what we did is the first bay out is always the medic that runs the most. They're coming out of the EMS room. Okay. Gave them three EMS storage closets. Nice. You know, so it's one of them. It's right where they're quick, at. Quick restock. When that makes back. a big difference. I work at a couple different stations, and I'm not knocking my stations, but they were hodgepodge together because we went up so quickly and that kind of stuff. But I got to go walk for, actually from one building to another building to restock my truck. If I had the availability right, to have restock right here, I can put that truck back in service just that much. That's quicker. one of the things we wanted to do was make it so when they're coming out of the EMS room, which is right there, yep. right? If you notice that the ones that are riding keep their gear right here. So if, if they go out on most of the calls, they'll throw it in the, in the compartment and go. Yep. They come back, restock it, boom, done. Back in service, that fast. That's awesome. So, but I'll say this is, this is you know, matter of fact, this was bought when we did the merger and we're already specking a new one out because it's you know five years old. Already. Okay, so they are part of the fire company here. Yes, this is this is part of us. Okay, because so. a lot of the ones are like, oh, we subcontract no. the EMS or something like that. We are you 100... actually hire these people uh, to become right. your EMS providers. One, we are 100% volunteer. It's just, you know, we, we have a paid medic crew every now and then. Most of the times, like on weekends, it's it's all volunteer. Okay. So, so right, mezzanine we'll upstairs. Mezzanine. And before we do that, I want to turn to the camera here. If you like what you're seeing, do us a favor. Hit that subscribe, hit that notification uh, so we can keep bringing you more. These are companies that we want to view across America. If you're ever interested in us coming to see your company, uh, send us an email at watchheroesnextdoor at gmail.com and we'll try to come see you. Let's go see their mezzanine. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, on the rubber floor, you
we got all the equipment in. It's like, oh, God, it's the rubber floor is like that. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to have to move something. So we got to move. But you guys got pretty much everything that you need. Yes. Pretty it's, much a gold's gym, no, so including the fire yes. uh, um, apparatus things. Yes. Wow, this is absolutely gross. And the fact that you look over, again, that daylight yes. coming through the windows. It is. Uh, yeah. And you got all the equipment that you need, treadmills, stair steppers. It's an awesome little place. Do you have a second mezzanine on the other side of the engine bay? Go straight across. Let's make our way over there. So what was the purpose of having the two different mezzanines? Obviously the one is a weight room. Is this one more of a storage? Is yeah. it a training area? We, yeah, yes and yes. Okay. All right. We set this up for a training area. Right? Yeah. Steel bar going across the top. Actually do, do a little bit of repelling if we want to do repelling. Okay. You know, bad weather, I'm not going to go outside and we're not throwing ladders against the new building. Like but we'll get back up there. And this one, I'm going to say, this is basically all for training. And we just bought, or we just were granted the door prop. Okay. Right? So, yeah, forcible entry. For, for forcible entry. Yep. So, all the plywood and stuff is sitting up top. So, we can start doing all the training and doing, you know, parapet walls and everything else up here. But right. this is, and if you look on every corner, we have monitors. So, when you come out, you see where you're going or what you got. Yep. So, but I'll say this is, this, you know, another area to do training. We're going to do props up here. Right. We're actually going to put the, the forcible entry prop up here because we've got a gate that we can open up okay. right up here. So this is going to be for the training side. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good way. It gets it off the engine bay floor. Correct. Uh, and you got a good place. I want to join. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> how do I join? <laughs> <laughs> Tell you me go, how I you, go on, you go into our website and you can download the application. Okay. It's, it's right on our website. Okay. So and I'll say, please do. Anybody who wants to join. You know, we, we love any, if you don't want to firefight and you just want to be an administrator, you know, we can use all the help again. Any volunteer company can use the help. Right. It's, on sadly, is volunteering is, is a dying breed. Okay. Do you know the name of your website? What does it go? Uppercovefc.org. Okay. So if you guys are watching and you guys want to join after seeing this video, come on down. So. So tell me a little bit about what's in this engine bay. It's different than what I've seen before. Yeah, so when you know we go about designing engine bays or we're working with a department to design an engine bay, you know, I always laugh. Everybody thinks that these are you know just garages. They're very simple spaces. And to me, they're more like an operating room. Right. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff in the ceiling. There's a lot of moving parts between the fourfold doors and the overhead doors and the heaters and whatnot, which is all climate specific. So this particular bit, this particular apparatus bay is two potentially drive through bays anchored on each end with a, a back end bay. So on the far left, we saw the medic unit. Yep. Over here, we see the, the basically the utility brush truck. Um, and so from a, from a mechanical standpoint, what we look at is indoor air quality first. And so this particular station has the belts and suspenders approach. Okay. You see we have the, in this case, the AirVac five-stage HEPA filter systems. Yep. Some stations use Plyme event. In this particular instance, we know that, you know, you might have a fill-in or another piece of apparatus that the exhaust is going to be on the other side. Yep. So we need to have flexibility. So that's there. And then around the perimeter, we have mechanical exhaust that basically is tied into an indoor air quality monitor. So if we see CO rise, if we see hydraulic fluids change the indoor air quality, that will kick on, basically flush the bays out. Within two minutes, it'll do a full air exchange okay. um, and manage that. You'll see we've got literally uh, the big ass fan. <laughs> right. Um, that's a brand name, I'm not making that up. All right. um, so that's, you know, uh, moves a lot of volume. On a day like today, it's pretty humid, so it's doing its best, yeah. um, but destratify the air. We've got the, in, the overhead infrared radiant heat, which heats the slab, not, yep. not the air. So when the doors open, it recovers quickly. Yeah. Tr linear trench drains right down the center. So when, that, when these units come back, the water drains off, comes under the middle. Right. Um, integrated alerting systems, which we can I hear throughout I noticed that you this. have the concrete floors too here because this is making it easy to squeeze you easy versus all that uh, rough stuff that yep. we used to have in the day. Yeah, it's not a mop eater. Um, you know, pretty pretty easy to kind of work with for these guys. And uh, you know, the, the, the doors are kind of organized to uh, optimize response times. You know, these four fold doors, which I know are Scott's pride and joy That's here. Pride, right. uh, you know, they open on a three to one ratio compared to an overhead sectional. So in just a couple seconds, these things can swing open and you know, they don't necessarily need to be tied into a generator either because now they can be manually opened if necessary. One of the, one of the nice features is, you know, we, we put the four fold doors in maintenance wise, they're no maintenance, you know, they pay for themselves in time. And in the, in the event of loss of power, these are very easy to operate, but for, for time-wise, open them. Yeah, watch yourself. Now the yeah. safety striping in the floor to make sure we maintain clearance. Yeah, yeah. But super quick. So if I would have that roll-up door to get this high of a ceiling, this would take you know a good seven seconds to come yes. up. Yes. This was four and a half, maybe if five, that. Yep. if that. And we would have had to spend more money on the building. Right. For the for the height for that door to transition in yeah. and out. Yeah, yeah. So that's a good way to do that. Now we went to uh, one of the oldest firehouses in Denver. 
and they had the old wood doors that were this way that still operate today. And the fact that, you know, we're coming back to what we used to do way back then, because it made sense. It's, it worked. It worked. And it still works. And the maintenance, like you said, right. makes yep. a big difference. I can't tell you how many times we've gone through rollers or different panels or what's happened, that door Doors starts to go up, we go through it, and it takes right. off the top of our yeah. lights. Well, so and that's what I'm saying. Something. This yeah. one, is, right. <laughs> yeah. This one, it's very obvious. If it's not open, you cannot. You're not proceeding forward. Right. But there have been so many times that it goes up, and you go, okay, I'm clear. Well, you forget about the back of the thing steps up, or it jams, and you go under it, and you take and everything else, or something off. happens, and it decides right. to come back down as you would. Right. All right, so can you tell me what kind of apparatus you have here in, in the years, makes, models, those kind of things? <laughs> We're gonna, it's going to be quite easy. Okay. When the merge took place and, and everything got signed in 2017, both departments got together and said, listen, we're going to get rid of our yellow equipment, we're going to get rid of our white, white equipment, we're going to get white, you know, the blue equipment is what we decided. So we went out and bought the, the, the three dodges. Well, that's a 16. These are set in 2017. Okay. This is set up as a brush unit. Yep. Uh, being in the rural area where we're at, we still run a lot of brush fires. Even with barn fires, you've got to chase it. Sure. And also, we have a utility with a you know, with a, the the ATV, the ATV on it that yep. we run also with a pump. So we uh, we run them lots of times. Yeah, yeah. You know, so let's say this is for the brush unit, utility truck, run a lot of medical boxes. We've been chasing the medic. Okay. You run this with it also. You know, we've got the utility bed in the back, carries you know carries five with no problem at all. Okay. So down in Maryland here, are you guys considered first responders? Are you EMTs? It depends. We actually have a couple paramedics that we can upgrade a med or uh, ambulance to a paramedic with running with what we have. Okay. So. Okay. Um, so 2017. 2000, both of these. Yes. And then you this got is this is a four guys. Okay. This is a 1500 gallon a minute pump with a 1500 gallon of water. Nice. Right. So. Okay. Uh, we had prior to the merge, Boring had two engines that were 1000 gallons. Arcadia had a 2500 or 2000 gallon tanker and two or 1000 gallon engines. Got rid of all that to go down to two engines. Okay. It, it's you know. So you guys are strictly engine company. Yes, you don't we, do we, much. They we, probably got rescue tools on. We it we carry we carry res, yes we carry rescue tools, but we are not rescue engines. Okay. And we don't have a ladder truck. We don't have a squad. Okay. This is a Pierce. This is a 2017 Pierce, 1500 gallon a minute pump, thousand gallon of water. Yeah. So because being up here in rural rural country is we we have no fire hydrants. Yeah. 2017 medic unit. Okay. Which is in the process of already getting be replaced. Right. Because of the time frames on them. Yeah, I mean, the one thing with the medic units, we, you saying they're doing 75% of your calls, they're getting used quite a bit more. Oh, that's, it's a terrible thing to say, they're throwaways. Yeah. You know, we're used to go out and you get something really customized, is on the medic units, they run so much anymore, they'll go out and go on a call and come back four hours later. Yeah. They pick up nine calls while they're gone. Yeah. You know, so, and then what we did, when the two companies became one, you know, to say, you, you, you have to keep history. If you don't have history, you have nothing. Right. So, you know, you got to have something from each department. So we kept two of the, the two of the oldest pieces in here, which is a 1936 Dodge Boyer. Okay. And then a 1976 Jeep, which was Boring's brush unit. Nice. So. Now you're talking about creating history or bringing history with you. You guys most recently created history by getting an award, correct? Can yes. You tell me about the, that? The Maryland State Firemen's Association conventions down Ocean Cities every year. In the first year of our merge, when everything was together, there's a, it's a trophy, a six foot trophy, it's crazy. <laughs> so it's never made it to the, this side of the Bay Bridge. Okay. Well, we went down in force, we took those, we took the chemical wagon, every piece we owned, took it down there, had the horse to pull the, the chemical wagon through the parade, we, we got best overall. Right. And everybody just stood there and looked at us, it's like, you know, we came to win, boys. Yeah. You know, this is, yeah. this is what, when, when, when teams get together and you merge, and it flows as a team, it shows. Yeah. And, and the pride was, you know, we had 36 people there. You know, it showed how proud That's we are. This good foundation for this fire company that took two fire companies into one. It's, That's a fantastic foundation to start building and it, continue it, this for another hundred years. Right. It's tough. It's it's tough because, and I'll, I'll I'll say me, and I'm one of the old dogs. You know, you've been doing it for 46 years. You know, it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. Well, guess what? You know, you're in the 21st century. You're going to learn new tricks. You know, the way it's we used to always do it that way is it's done, right? I'm not saying modern technology is better, but there's a lot of things out there that are a lot better. So you take your old habits, you mix them with your new habits, and you go, okay, let's meet in the middle. And that's what these two companies have done. It's like, you know, leave your feelings at the door, and that's a joke. If you're mad at somebody, it stays outside, you come in here, we are, we're a brotherhood, right? And it'll always be a brotherhood, and awesome. you take care of your own. You come on in here, no matter what happened by our, when you walk in this building, we are one, right? And if you look, the three, the three main pieces have names on them. It's Unity, Hope, and I forget what the other one. And that's what this was built on. When they were put in service, they were blessed. They were given a name by our, our you know. Awesome. So, awesome. yeah, but. Well, Scott, I really appreciate it. Thank you, it. I you appreciate know, thank it. Thank you for taking us around. Rob, you know, 
excellent job on the Thank design you. of this building. You know, we definitely, if anybody's looking at building another building, get a hold of Rob and his firm. Uh, he, we've seen him down at Fierro. You know, if you haven't been to Fierro, go down there. You're going to learn so much that goes into these kind of things. So thank you all for watching. This was another Station Cribs uh, with Upco. Uh, Upper Co. Upper Co. See, I got to get that right. With Upper Co. Volunteer Fire Station. Thank you for watching. Hit subscribe. Hit notifications so we can keep bringing you more. Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Thank you all for joining us today. Today we are in Upco, Maryland. We're going to be doing the Upco Volunteer Fire Station. Upper Co. Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Thank you all for joining us today. We're in the Upper Co, Maryland. Upper Co. Ma what, where am I starting then? Am I doing the whole intro again? Okay.